you're not looking at AI, you're not even looking at CGI. This is actually a 3D printer. And what did I do to it? Well, let's just say you've never seen a 3D printer used like this before. And before you freak out, don't worry, I did actually test the printer first before I glued a bunch of stuff to it, spray painted it, and made it a part of the set. This is Elegoo's brand new Core XY 3D printer, the Centauri Carbon. It's their first machine in this category, and this may be the best 3D printer that Elegoo has ever produced. But we'll get to all of that in a bit, because first, I need to show you how I turned a cutting edge 3D printer into a weathered dystopian skyscraper. Now, this wasn't even the original plan. I really wanted to just build a small scale dystopian city for some upcoming content. You know, something really gritty and, and cinematic. And as I was putting together kind of the basic shapes for some buildings, and I was 3D printing all of the little things on the Centauri Carbon, I kind of wondered, what if the printer became part of the scene itself? Hold up. We're obviously not gonna do this spray painting in the studio. This place would be covered in it. It's gonna take like two cans of primer uh, just to get going. So we're gonna take this outside and do it out there. And then after the primer, we're actually gonna 3D print the little bits that go on it that turn it into like a dystopian style building. We're gonna 3D print those with this machine and then we're gonna put it all on. So you'll see that here in a second um, as soon as this dries and gets back into the studio. It is the next day, as you can see, all primered up. Take a look at that. Pretty sweet, huh? All primered up and ready to go. So now the plan is you basically take a whole bunch of just scraps and maybe things that we can 3D print, right? So I 3D printed a bunch of these little pipes. This is actually part of these NES cartridges uh, back here that I have, and this is one that was split in half that had some print failures. We're just putting a bunch of hot glue down. That's how this game is played here. And that's it. Look at that. So we get this cool kind of platform. Yeah, and then this whole thing gets an awesome shade of black. So we're actually gonna paint this as well. Hot glue makes this awful convenient. We're gonna go on there and get some nice hot glue. We're gonna stick that right into here. And then we'll get that pushed right against there. An NES, mini NES, that I kind of trimmed off flush inside the slicer before I printed it. Right there, and I know you're going, that's a lot of glue. It is a lot of glue. Um, I think we're gonna throw like a medium Band, and we may line it up just like that. So if we have a empty spool of like bamboo here, right? We can just pop this apart, pull off that tube. Yeah, so even something like that up on top of this and then putting something up on top of that. So before we do that, I'm gonna add some panels to the front. Get a generous amount of hot glue on there. We'll do that, so kind of like sometimes a pressure tank or something, storage tank. I have this antenna from a Linksys router, generous amount of hot glue. Yes, just like that. Put a line of glue right across that bottom. And what, like I said, when we paint this, I think it's gonna look really freaking good. What do you think? Pretty sweet. So now we have a door that still opens. Now, how many of you are watching this right now and went, what is this guy doing? He's ruining this printer. Seriously, put it in the comments below. How many people think I just ruined this? But you haven't seen it yet. See these right here? These are these little barrels that I found on uh, printables. What do you think? So we're kind of seeing this go together. Now, there are some other things that we can do and that is with TPU. We are going to create some type of cables, basically. Yeah, like that. See that? Pretty awesome. And because uh, I got to run out of the studio and grab a few more things to really dress this up, um, but I'll show you what it looks like before it heads out to get the, uh, the second coat of primer to kind of primer everything and the printer again. All right, now that everything's glued on, we got some lights on there, we have all of the pieces and parts, we have to take it back outside and we have to hit it with another coat of primer. 
Now, before that primer really even dries, you can just go ahead and hit it with the next couple of coats. Um, we're not putting a lot of paint on, but we're gonna hit it with some black and we're gonna highlight kind of some interesting areas, the edges, uh, overhangs, things like that, anything that we really wanna highlight. And then after that coat goes on, we're actually gonna dust it from the top with white and a matte white. And that's really gonna like basically light up the edges or the rims of everything when we hit it with backlights in the studio. And here is the printer back in the studio. We did let it dry for a couple of hours before we moved it. Now we're ready to get some cinematic shots. And we do that by making multiple passes with our motion control slider. And we do make changes to the aperture and we make changes to lighting and things like that between passes. And then we edit that in After Effects. And the reason we use those passes is because it really allows us to modify each individual pass in post uh, effectively getting the style um, or the cinematic shot that we really are looking for rather than having to get it all in camera at once. All right, what did you think? Pretty cool, huh? I can make that stuff all day long, it's super addicting. Anyway, let's get to the specs on this machine and then my final thoughts. We'll start with the obvious. This is Elegoo's very first Core XY 3D printer, which ultimately means we're gonna get some additional speed and more material choices. This first Core XY machine from them comes with a very standard build volume of 256 millimeters cubed, which is going to be large enough to be able to print everything that the average person will want to print. It can reach speeds of up to 500 millimeters per second, and it comes standard with an all metal hot end and hardened steel extruder gears and nozzle. And it comes standard with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, just so you know. You'll be able to print a wide range of materials from PLAs, PTGs, and TPUs, all the way up to ABSs, ASAs, and nylons, along with polycarbonates and even more exotic materials with a hot end that can reach a maximum temperature of 320 degrees Celsius and a build plate that tops out at about 110. Now, I love seeing these machines now that are above the classic 300-100 combination of years past. The enclosure is one of the nicest that I've ever seen, and it's going to help prevent warping with more advanced filaments, as well as help keep the air in and around your makerspace a little bit cleaner with their nano mineral crystal filters. The enclosure is equipped with a glass front door and a removable glass lid for when you are printing with more temperature sensitive filaments like PLA. Like most 3D printers today, it comes uh, with a camera tucked away up here in the corner and that's gonna allow you to monitor your prints remotely and make time lapses. Power loss recovery comes standard, which I think is something that we've just come to expect on all new 3D printers today. And auto leveling and calibration is actually really good. It's very time consuming, but you'll only need to run that when you need to. It won't run a calibration before every print, meaning it is really fast from the time that you start a print to the time that it begins printing. Now the build plate is double-sided. It's got a texture on one side and smooth on the other. And when you're printing PLA, you'll only need to heat the build plate up to about 30 C, which also contributes to just how fast it starts printing. Now, along with it having an AC heated bed, it heats up really fast. Slicing is done with their Elegoo slicer, which I had no problems with. Um, the experience is very normal for anyone familiar with Orca Slicer. It's basically just a rebranded version of that. You can send prints over your wireless network or you can walk them over with USB. As for the interface, this is one of the cleanest interfaces that I've seen on any 3D printer recently. Elegoo kind of has a reputation for really clean and simple UIs. Um, their Neptune series printers were amazing, and I think that they did a great job here again. Even the startup wizard was welcoming, nice and simple, out of the box, and in five minutes you're printing. Now, a couple things to note. The tool head actually has an integrated filament cutter, and there is a nozzle wiper in the back, along with a filament purge chute on the back. So I'll expect to see multicolor soon because I think everyone in this space will have to have multicolor or multi-material options eventually. As for my recommendation, 
that is really going to come down to price. Unfortunately, I can't disclose the price right now until it's released, and it's not released for about a week from the time this video is recorded, so I will answer it this way. If the printer is around the $500 price point, this is a great machine. It's heavy duty, like really heavy. It's well built, it's from a well-known brand, and I've had nothing but success with it. I printed dozens of prints over weeks, and I only had a single failure with a print coming loose from the build plate, but that was easily fixed with adding a brim in the slicer and just resending it. As for print quality, I wanted to print something a little different than the dystopian parts that I did, so I scaled up Super Mario, gave him standard tree supports, and sent it. And it turned out really freaking nice. Take a look at this B-roll. Um, it's, it's perfection. Now, as for comparisons, I would say the print quality is on par, if not better, than Bamboo Lab P-Series printers. And of course, if you're a fan of Elegoo, then this is an obvious buy. Make sure you are subscribed. We'll have some comparison videos coming soon. Let me give a huge shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. I couldn't do this without you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one. Seriously, what do you think? Come on. A dystopian 3D printer. And I intentionally waited till the very end. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. I might give this one away. Um, we'll hold a drawing, or maybe we'll give it away for charity. I don't know. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Think it's a good idea?